Namaste. Welcome everyone to Yoga for Runners HQ. I'm Jess and today we're going to focus on the hips. So we're going to do some postures that are going to release tight hips. You can do this any time of the day. I would recommend it before a run and after a run, even before you sleep. So you don't need any props. You're going to be onto the mat. It's going to be focused on like a release. So just breathe into the body, breathe into the areas that you feel are tight or stiff, and today our focus is hips. So you might want to just direct your attention there and allow your breath to send more oxygen to these areas to allow them to relax and to open up. Now, if you have any injuries, please be mindful. Just don't push yourself. So if there's something you can't do, then don't do it. Or maybe drop us a question on Facebook to see how you can do it. Also, uh, if there's something that you have any questions, then please also just send us a message. All right, so we're going to start sitting onto our mat. You're going to extend the legs forward. So since this is focusing on hips, we're going to do some active movements for the hips, some releasing for the glutes as well. So first we're going to start with Hindolasana, it's cradle pose. This helps open up the hip joint and it also helps to release any tightness maybe in the glute muscle. So bring the left foot into the right elbow crease and take your left knee into the left elbow crease and then interlace the hand. So it's like you're cradling a little dog or a little baby. Now, your toes are going to be lifted upwards and you're going to bring the foot as close as you can towards the chest. It doesn't matter how far you are today. You can even hold on to the outer edge of that foot with your right hand. You don't need to be so close. You want to keep a long spine, so keep pressing your sitting bones into the floor and lengthening the crown of the head upwards. You might even feel more of a stretch in that left glute when you do that. Everything is active. The body is engaged. All right. Let's cradle. So we're just going to take the leg to the left, take the leg to the right. Good. Just keep going like this. Slow movements. Maybe you want to make little circles with the foot. Imagine that you're getting into all corners of that ball and socket joint, which is the hip joint. All right, perfect. Let's extend the left leg forward and bring the right foot in this time. Set yourself up for Hindalasana and then just start to cradle the leg. Maybe one hip is tighter than the other and that's totally okay. Just spend more time on that throughout your day. Be aware of every part of the body and how it moves, how it can move. All right, extending the right leg forward. Press your hands into the floor. Now this motion is going to focus on internal and external rotation of the hip joint, which is super important, especially if you want to get into side jumps or any type of unexpected occurrence when we're running. So flex the feet, toes pointing towards the face, heels forward. You're going to take the feet all the way to the left, Almost touching the floor, maybe touching the floor. Good. Now take the feet all the way to the right. Do this a couple more times, and I want you to close the eyes and focus on the sensation in the hips. So you might feel like the outer hip is working on that right leg right now. So we're going to keep going right to left. All right, perfect. Okay, now you're gonna slide the feet a little closer towards you. Knees are bent, feet are wider than the hips. Window wipe the knees, left and right. This is also good for internal and external rotation of the hips. And it helps also release the lower back. Perfect. While we're in this position, we're going to go into a 90-90. So 90-90, starting with the left leg in front. Align your shin with the front of the mat. 
and then walk the left foot all the way to the right, to the point where your left knee is in line with the left hip. So you're making a 90 degree angle with the foot. Good. Pressing that left sitting bone down. Now let's move on to the right leg. So you're going to still continue that 90 degree angle with the right leg. So you might have to bring the right knee back a little bit so it's in line with the right hip. And then take a look at that foot, the heel. Is it in line with the right knee? Maybe not. Maybe you have to walk it out a bit. Good. Now both toes are flexed. You're pressing your left knee and left heel down. And you're pressing your back knee and back heel down. Now, the front thigh is externally rotating. That hip is externally rotating. And the back is internally rotating. So keep pressing your right thigh down and your left thigh down as well. Everything's pushing down as the chest is lifting up. Great. So from here, you can walk the hands forward. Take an inhale to lift the chest. And then on the exhale, hinge from the hips, keeping the back straight. Get to the point where you feel a sensation in the left hip. And we're going to stay here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Rise back up. Place your palms together. Make like a fist. There you go. And we're going to rotate to the other side very slowly. So this is controlled articular rotation of our hips, getting our joints strong with these slow movements. All right. So keeping the spine erect, you're going to lift the knees up and start to move to the back of the mat, keeping the heels intact. There you go. Now you're on the other side. So 90-90 with the right leg in front. Maybe you want to adjust the legs to their 90 degrees. Beautiful. Plant the hands down. Press the right sitting bone down, the right knee down, right heel down. Back thigh, back knee, back leg. All right, let's take a breath in. We're here. On the exhale, you can crawl the hands forward. Pinch from the hips, keep pressing the thighs down, pressing the feet down. Good, we'll stay here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Wonderful. Come back up. Now, bring the soles of the feet together. Maybe you can try to do it without hands, although you can use your hands if you want. Soles of the feet together into a butterfly position. This is a very commonly used posture in our yoga flows. It's really great for opening the hips and the groin, also the glutes. So you're going to open the feet like a book. You can see the soles of your feet. Inhale to lift the chest, and then exhale, hinge forward. Beautiful. Reach the hands forward and then just crawl them to the left. You can fold here. Bring them back forward, breathe in. And then as you exhale, take the hands to the right and fold here. Good. Bring the hands forward and see if you can fold a little deeper. Allow the neck to be long. You're looking at your toes, maybe closing the eyes, and you can sway from left to right. Maybe you can go deeper. Maybe the hips are opening up a little more. All right, slowly crawl back. Swing the legs back, and you're going to come into... A child's pose with knees together. Bring the hips towards the heels. This is a great posture for the hips as well. If you have a friend nearby, you can have them come and just slightly and lightly press onto your lower back to really get into the sockets of the hips. All right, let's move forward. That was just a little break. 
Hands forward, inhale, tabletop. On the exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, back and up. Let's pedal the feet. This one is for the entire body. We always can bring it in. And if you sway the hips from side to side, you're getting into the hips. Beautiful. Bring the feet together. Lift up to your tippy toes. Breathe in. On the exhale, you're going to take the heels to the left, plant them down, and then sink the left hip down towards the floor until it almost touches. Good. Inhale. Come back to the down dog on your tippy toes. And then on the exhale, heels to the right, hip down. Good. One more time on each side. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, twist and crunch down. Last side, right side. Good. Inhale, back to down dog. Breathe in, right leg up to the sky. As you breathe out, bend the right knee, lift the knee up behind you, and let the right foot drop behind you. So you're still in a three-legged down dog, but you're opening the hip. Let's make two big circles with the right knee, really big, clockwise. Keep pressing your hands into the floor. Good. Now, counterclockwise. Super huge circles. Awesome. Right leg reaches up. And then right leg, right foot comes down to the left, down dog. Left side. Breathe in. Left leg up. Exhale. Bend the knee. Drop the foot behind you. Keep pressing to the hands. Now, two big circles clockwise. Breathe through the nose. Two big circles counterclockwise. Beautiful. Left foot meets the right. All right. Bend the knees, take a breath in. Exhale. And then step the left foot to the outside of the left hand, and then the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Yogi squat. Tailbone is shifting downwards as the chest is lifting up. Press the palms together and allow the elbows to open the knees. Good. Hands back to the floor. Come onto the fingertips, really. Firm them down. Inhale as you take the right leg all the way back. Press the toes into the floor. And then drop the hips towards the floor. However, don't let them touch. Let's take an inhale here as we open the chest. It's like we're doing a cobra. Sinking the hips down. Rolling the shoulders back. Getting into the right hip flexors. That left knee can be pushing to the side to get a little deeper. Good. Walk the hands back about half a foot. And then inhale, straighten the front leg and the back leg and fold the chest down. So we're in a pyramid pose now. This is going to be a little mini flow that we're doing. This gets into the hamstrings, the back of the legs and the glutes. Beautiful. Inhale, bend back into that front knee for this low lizard, a really low runner's lunge. And then on the exhale, right foot goes to the outside of the right hand, and you're back in your yogi squat. We're going to do that on the left hand side, folks. Fingertips down. Inhale, left leg reaches all the way back, softly plant it down. Good. Toes are pressing down after they went left leg. Take a couple of breaths here as you sink the hips down, bend into the front knee, allow the knee to drop to the side, open the heart. Imagine we have a light beaming out through your chest. Good. 
Good. Breathe in. And then on the exhale, straighten the front leg, flex the toes, walk the hands back just a little bit and fold into this pyramid variation. Parasvottanasana in Sanskrit. All right, come back to the, tip, the fingertips. Inhale, bend into the front knee. Sing, open the chest, yes. Exhale, left foot to the outside of the left hand, and then you're back in your malasana, yogi squat. Very good. From here, just drop the hips back. Bend the knees and give yourself a nice little squeeze. So you can stay here for a little while. Slowly roll back to your back as you hold on to the thighs. Bring the knees in towards the chest. Hold on to the knees. And then just make circles with the knees. So you can take the knees to the chest and then apart and then forward. Or you can keep the knees together and make these circles. However, I like the first one because we're still making these hip rotations. Wonderful. We can extend the legs forward. And enjoy a mini shavasana. Let the hips just relax. Option here to also bring the soles of the feet together and do a reclined butterfly. So soles of the feet together towards the inner groin and knees are going to fall apart to the sides. So this is a really good hip opener. You can stay here for a few minutes and then close off with the Shavasana where your body is in straight form. And that should be the end of your quick yoga hip flow. So thank you guys. See you next time.